So what is given to us is a set of points in a plane. Now, I map these points into 3D like this. Each point is mapped like this. Can you visualize uh, where this point lies? So this lies on a parabola z is equal to x square plus y square. Okay. And if there is a point here, okay, let's, uh, yeah, maybe I can draw it in 3D, no? Let's see. Okay, now this is the jet and this is X and Y. Okay, and your parabola is something like this. Okay, and if you take a point here, which is on the XY plane, okay, this point is. No, this is not the point. Okay, the correct way it will be like this. Yeah. If you vertically lift this point onto this parabola. And this is the point on the parabola. So z coordinate is equivalent to x square plus y square. So that is on the parabola. Okay. And if you take the tangent at this point, tangent plane in 3D. Okay. A equation of that tangent is uh, like this. Okay. So if you take this uh, P I, uh, no, sorry, uh, X I and Y I. Okay, let's use the same notation. Okay, what is given in this book? Okay, so the tangent is actually up like this. Okay, this tangent plane here. So for all these uh, n points, we have a n tangent planes. Okay, let's take this tangent planes. Okay, let's, this is the, uh, okay, uh, let's denote this by H of P. Now, you are mapping all the points into this three dimension, this thing, okay? And that is what is called this set HP. Now, if you compute this, uh, on a convex hull, okay? Yeah, so you have this uh, hmm, off planes here, no? So you take this intersection of this off plane. So now what we have actually, these off planes are the set of uh, this off planes where each point is belongs to this set P. Okay. Now, yeah, only you are taking the positive side so that uh, area above this hyperplane okay so this hyperplane 
all the area above, this is a H place actually. If you take this one, okay, and if you compute this polar uh, uh, intersection of this all hyper hyperplanes, so basically uh, it's similar to the construct of the, the convex polygon in the 2D intersections of half planes. So in the 2D we have discussed this intersection of half planes, no? Okay, and similarly, you construct the intersection of all these half planes in the 3D. Okay, and if you project the vertices and the edges of this polyhedra onto two dimensional plane, and that is exactly equal to the Warner diagram in 2D. projection of okay convex hull of these hyperplanes is okay on 2d okay on xy plane is this one and that okay just I'm giving the idea actually, nothing else, okay? So, one can use simple geometry to prove this one. Suppose if you have a, for example, okay, if you have a, uh, suppose you have another point here, okay? Now you, you project this, uh, lift this point on this parabola, and we have a one uh, hyperplane at this point. And this is actually represent the intersection between the two hyperplanes, which is a line. Okay, if you take a two planes, okay, it is a intersection between two planes is a line. Okay, if that is nothing but if you project that line onto this uh, two dimensional plane, okay, that is nothing but a <laughs> perpendicular bisector of this two sides in the plane. So, if you project all these uh, edges, which are there in the 3D convex hull, okay, so that exactly gives this one and diagram. So, you're able to uh, understand what I'm saying. Of course, it's required some mathematical proof, geometric proof, okay, Understood the idea? What is this? What I'm saying? Yes, sir. So what we did? So we are taking these points in two-dimensional plane and mapped into a uh, point in three-dimensional. This point is nothing but a vertically lifting the points onto a parabola. Z is equal to x square plus y square. And if you take a tangent plane. At these points on the for this uh, paraboloid in 3D, okay, and these hyperplanes, okay, what you are representing by this edge. And if you take this, if you are taking only positive side, one side, above part, okay, and if you take this intersection of this all hyperplanes, what you will get is a convex polyhedron in 3D. So, convex polyhedron basically you have vertices. Okay, and uh, edges. So if you project it back onto this uh, two-dimensional plane, those gives this Warner diagram. Okay. So here I have shown you two examples. We have two points, and these two points are projected onto this one, are lifted onto this paraboloid, and the corresponding uh, this tangent plane that I'm showing here, and if you take intersection of these two hyperplanes in the 3D, that is nothing but a line. So if you project that line, that is nothing but a perpendicular bisect between these two sides. Okay.
Now, if you, this is one thing, okay? Another way of looking at actually, you take these points here. Okay, there will be other points also will be there on the paraboid which are vertically lifted from the 2D plane. Now you construct, this. see, I'm just showing only 2D actually, there are three uh, paraboloid, okay? So maybe I'll write it uh, this manner, okay? Okay, so there are points on the three-dimensional parabola, right? and if you construct the convex cell of these three uh, points on the this thing, and project this, so what we're doing, we are constructing the convex cell of So we are constructing the convex cell of 3D points, okay? So now I represent the P dash, okay? Or maybe I'll write the P dash is like this. Set up all the points. And XY basically belongs to this set P. So convex cell of these points, okay? You construct and projected this one, okay? This convex cell on 2D plane, okay? And it is actually delta triangulation. Okay? So, what you had actually, this uh, convex cell of these hyperplanes, if you project it, you'll get a Warner diagram. And if you take these points and construct the convex and project it back onto the 2D plane, you'll get a delta triangulation. Okay, so this is a beautiful relation between the Warner diagram and uh, delta triangulation and convex cell. Okay, so two-dimensional Warner diagram delta triangulation related to three-dimensional convex cell in this manner. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, what do you mean by convex cell of the hyperplanes? I didn't get that properly. In 2D, suppose these are the half planes what is given to us. Okay. What is the intersection of these half planes? This shaded region, no? Yes, sir. So here, uh, what I mean to say, the intersection of these half planes means convex cell of these things. Okay, that is convex cell. I'm talking about this convex cell. Okay. So okay. here, uh, uh, what I am said actually is, yeah, not a convex cell actually. Intersection of, I should not write this convex cell, intersection of these half planes. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Now, fine. Yeah. So basically, it's intersection of half planes. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, which is the convex cell? That is what is projected onto the XY plane, and you will get this one and diagram. Okay. And if you take these three-dimensional points and construct the one and uh, convex cell uh, directly, and if you project back onto this one, you will get a delta triangulation of this one. So this is a nice geometry relation, okay? So there is a one software which is there on the uh, Linux platform. Hull. Okay, you can install it actually. You most probably you will get a uh, some package in some format. Okay, so this Q hull program basically construct the convex hull any dimension. So this is the program. Okay, any dimension, okay?
So using this one, okay, if you specify different command uh, options, you can get convex hull, corner diagram, or delta triangulation. Okay, all three it can give by using this relation. So you have points in 2D. And if you want to convex it, construct convex and gives. And if you want to order diagram, it projected onto this paraboloid and construct this convex and 3D or intersection of this hyperplane in 3D and project back and gives to your order diagram into 2D. So the simple one algorithm actually, one code which is used for all three of them. Okay. And uh, if you want to generate input to this uh, QL program, there is a one uh, called R box. Okay, this program generates a points in any dimension. So you can generate different ways. You can generate points inside a rectangular box or inside a circle on the surface of a sphere in any dimension and use that input to this one and it will construct this one. Okay, and there is another uh, code what is called a jump view which is, can be used to view the output of the QCAL. Not QCAL, QHAL, okay? So all three are command uh, line options actually. So you can see the man pages and you can use this one and see one line diagram, delayed triangulation and quadrant cell in 2D, 3D. Of course, this quick hull, the Q hull program also computes these things any dimension, but visualization becomes difficult. You cannot visualize. You can visualize only up to 3D. So, JAMU helps there actually. Okay. Just try to install these three packages and play around and see this one diagram of points. Okay. Yeah. So, any questions? Okay, now uh, we will take up another problem. What is called a point location? So what is a point location? So when you are using this uh, uh, Google Maps, your phone knows that your GPS locations. And that GPS location, Google Maps takes and show it on the map. Okay. So given X, Y, Z coordinates are X, Y coordinates. What it's may not be, it's not in the X, Y coordinates, some other format. So let's talk about the equivalent uh, dimension. So given a point in X, Y, Okay, and you have a map. So you have to locate this where this point lies. Okay, so suppose if you have India map and statewide boundaries are there. Okay, now my coordinates are this X and Y. So this X and Y point lies in the state of Assam or state of Mizoram or state of Karnataka. Andhra Pradesh or which state we have to decide. So that is what is called a point location. You have a map. Okay. And you have to locate this point in which region it lies. So if you uh, simplify it. So what we have actually is. Straight line. Planar graph. Okay. There's some region. So the plane is divided into regions. Okay. So 
I simplified the map very much. Assume that each region represents some state or some district. Now, I given a query with these coordinates. Now, I, identify, I have to identify in which region and which phase this query point lies. So, query point lies in this region. Okay. So, I do a report. Okay. Suppose if I name them, one, two, three, like this. And this is nine outside region. So the query point lies in the region four. So that should be output. This is what is called a point location. Okay. Understood what is the point location means? You have to identify this point lies in which region. So the query point based, so you can pre-process this given input planar state line embedded graph. So that actually these queries can be answered quickly. See, this is what happens in your uh, Google Maps. So it gives the address. So okay, this is your location. You are in this so and so state, you are in so and so district, you are in this so and so place. Okay, it gives a physical uh, location by from the GPS location of. So how to do this point location? The problem definition is clear to everyone. Yes. Okay. Now we'll take a much simpler ones. Let's take a convex polygon. Some query point is given to us. Now we have to tell whether this query point is inside the convex cell or outside the convex cell. How quickly we can do it? Can you think of some way of doing it? We can check for each half plane of the edges uh, whether it is right on the positive side or not. Okay, so it's a good idea. We can assume that the points are given in a, some order, clockwise order, counterclockwise order. So assume that it is given in the counterclockwise order. So you check whether it is on the left of this one. In suppose inside, if it is in this direction, or what are you saying actually is left of this plane. Okay, both are same. Okay, so like that, you check for each and every edge or every plane. So it is satisfied with respect to all of them. Okay, then it is inside. Otherwise, it outside. If for outside, okay, uh, for this respect to one two, it is left side. For two three, it is on the right side. So if the point is outside means for some it will be left side or some it is right side. If it is inside means for each and every edge it is on the left side. So this you can do it in linear time. But linear time is not a good thing. Actually can we do better? Yes, can you think of some method? Thank you. 
So what I will do here is. Given a convex polygon with respect to some inside point, some orbit inside point. I'll draw these rays through the vertices. Okay. So, first I will check whether the given query point lies in which sector. So, here if I name them, okay. So, this is sector A, B, C, D, E. Okay. First, I will identify the sector B. So, query point is here. How I can identify this? Query point lies in the sector B. It should lie on opposite side of the race for one left for one right. What is given to us actually these vertices in the counterclockwise order. So for each vertex we can find whether it is on the left side or the right side. The point where it uh, makes a transition it is in that sector. Again it's taking linear time no? Okay. Is it See, uh, binary, said, we can use uh, binary search because for uh, like a set of points it will be left and for a set of points it will be right. So we have to find the transition point left to right. So we can use binary search for that. The transition happens only at one place. See, if you look at this one, see, whenever I say that, okay, better than linear time, first thing should come to our mind is binary search logarithmic time. Yeah, that he came correctly, actually. Whatever he said is that correct. So we have to try to get a logarithmic time. So logarithmic time means we should be able to do the binary search. So by the middle element, we should be able to compare and throw away half of it and you have to search only remaining half. If you are able to do it at every instant of time, it is done. So if you look at this one, with respect to pause to x-axis, all these rays are increasing angles. Okay? So you can identify these two rays where this point lies in logarithmic time. So basically you are checking for this angle. So where this angle lies. So you can do this binary search among these angles to identify this sector. Yes? Agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so once you identify the sector, you have to see whether this edge, okay, is, is inside, I mean, basically a left of right of this edge or not. So that again can be done in constant time. So overall time complex is log n. Yes? Agree? Yes. yes. So here we no need to do any pre-processing. The vertices are given in the counterclockwise direction. You can use that order itself to do the binary search here based on their angles. So basically, you have to take some arbitrary point which is inside this uh, convex cell that you can find out in constant time. That's not an issue. You take any three points, form a triangle, and take some point inside the triangle. That's sufficient. Okay. Yes. 
is it it clear no sir that o is any random point inside the uh, figure yes yes any random point oh, okay so you can find out these angles whenever you want in constant time on the fly when you are doing the binary search you take the vertex and find the angle and compare with the theta and decide whether you have to go for left or right so we are not calculating these angles and keeping in a uh, array so there is no pre processing not required you can do it but it is not required on the fly we can find out yes yes any questions here so let's take a little bit of complicated uh, polygon then the convex one okay so what is called a star shaped polygon so the name indicate that it is a star shaped so how to define this mathematically suppose if you stand somewhere here in the middle and assume that this is the walls these edges of this uh, polygon is in the walls and by standing at this point you can watch entire boundary yes from inside each and every point on the boundary is visible yes each and every point is visible here actually i draw this a curved one this is straight line actually okay there the straight line edges okay so entire boundary is visible here but if you stand somewhere here okay you can not see this point here or this point here okay from this point entire boundary is not visible interior of the boundary is not visible is it clear the visibility aspect here yes okay uh so for a given polygon if there exists a one point from which entire boundary is visible and that polygon is called a star shaped polygon so star shaped polygon is given and if such a point is known to us and we can use the same technique whatever we discuss for the convex polygon we can do the same thing here also these sectors are angularly ordered okay so we can do the binary search and we can again tell that okay with respect to that edge whether inside or outside and uh, we can do it in logger the next time yes agree any questions yeah now given a star shaped polygon how we can find out one such point so basically if you take these edges and off plane 
this side. Okay. So intersection of these off planes is what is this shaded region? Agree? Yes, sir. And this is what is called a kernel of polygon. How we can compute this kernel of a polygon? By taking the intersection of these off planes. How much time you require to compute this one? Because this is very much similar to the construction of convex hull. You can do it in n log n time. Okay, but still I'm skipping it. You try to find out the algorithm for doing this one. Okay, you can use a divide and conquer. OK, so once you compute the, this kernel, you can take any point inside and do this uh, processing. You can do that to say. So this is a, here this we have to spend a log n time to find a kernel and you take any point inside the kernel. And once that is done, that is a part of the pre-processing. Once you've done this one and query can be answered in logarithmic time. OK, any questions here? Sir, the original question was we should find the point whether it is inside or outside, uh, but now we are finding it is in which sector. Yeah, once you identify the sector, suppose this is inside this sector. Now you decide whether with respect to this edge is the left side or right side. So if it is counterclockwise direction, if it is right side outside, if it is left side inside, that's all. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. See, that's what we did for the convex polygon also. also yes, yes, I got it. Sector. Yeah, the same thing we are doing here also. That is that can be done constant time. Yes. Okay. Yeah, same thing can be done for the star shaped polygon also. Okay. But if you uh, take uh, some arbitrary polygon. Okay. So what you call is a simple polygon. Simple polygon can be very complex. Okay, the name is simple. Okay, it can be uh, very complex. Okay, you can see that. Okay, I can draw it. Okay, only thing is the edges are non-intersecting. So how to do this point location here? Of course, we will uh, not bother into this simple polygon. And directly we go to this uh, planar straight line graph, something like this. Okay. And we'll discuss simple method actually. Okay. Any questions still now? Tomorrow I'll discuss a one simple method, which is not the optimal one to do the point location in the planar straight line embedded graph. Query time is longer than eight. Okay, but we need uh, some pre-processing and you have to use uh, some space. That way, this very simple algorithm. Okay, so if you have any questions, let's discuss. Okay, and uh, tomorrow also I'll take a little shorter uh, class. Okay. Okay, if you have, don't have any questions, we will uh, stop it here. Sir, what are the myths and portions? 
everything whatever discussed till mid semester uh, next week uh, another sir will be taking approximate al algorithm should we consider that also yeah some initial introduction only you will discuss some basic things okay you, you attend and you uh, see if i if at all i ask some question i'll ask some simple question only from that okay Okay. Yes. See, everything should be there. Why you want to a exception actually? They are IIT students, IIT BTEC students. You should not ask these questions, these exemptions. You are the one of the best students in the country, not only the country, in the world. And don't ask for the, don't try for any shortcuts. You live up to expectation of the btech graduate student from iit are going to be graduated from the iit okay live like that do like that okay okay see you tomorrow